Starting to the right side of the map is our former TSL, Zerg. 1-1. One, one. So far in the group it is. TSL Shine. Decent start in the group, wants to keep it going. His opponent from the team, STX Soul. Got a lot of soul. He is... STX Soul, Trap. And I have to correct myself. If Trap is going is losing this game, he has no chance of advancing to Code S. That was, of course, true. But he also doesn't have a chance to uh, go at the wildcard spot anymore. So if he loses here, he's out. He will be in Code 8 next season. Everything is on the line for him. Happy yeah. still has a shot to get third place, but he doesn't anymore. If he loses, of course, that is. So let's find out what his plan is. It's one of the most difficult maps for Protoss these days against the Zerg player. We've seen it a couple of times today already. Dream won against Trap here. Yeah, Trap actually has to play the same map twice in a row. Against the Terran and then against the Zerg. He must not have been amused when he saw the map draws. There's the hatch. Hatch first, actually. Shine taking also a bit of a gamble here. Yeah. Going for hatch first at 15. A lot of Zerg players are reluctant to start with the hatch because a uh, forge opening for your opponent gives you gives him the chance to take it down. But Trav does not scout and also doesn't drop a forge. He goes for the Nexus first instead. So it works out for both players in, in that regard. The Zerg players don't feel very happy with the hatchery first. Shine checking just to make sure there's no cannoning just going on as well. They're not playing this too risky. And there's the forge, of course, as you'd expect from Trap, who sends a little bit of a late scout out. He's going to go towards that natural. We'll, of course, try to block the third base as long as he can. And Shine knows what's going on. He yeah. even sends out another drone just to be uh, safe. Scouts the probe, can now follow it, but he saw already the timing for the Nexus and the Forge, so he's fine here. The opening works well for him, and he sends out another drone now to get this third base in very, very early, actually. There it is, no block, 330. And at this point, you know, we have a very... A very a situation where Trap now knows, okay, you've taken your base really comfortably, means I can also relax, but he knows that he's got a few specific timings he may want to use. He may want to go for a gateway attack even with this type of play up against it because he knows his opponent doesn't have gas, but... The problem is that gateway attacks will really hit very late because you start with a forge first, so you have to wait for exactly. your cybernetic score, and the timings are known to shine. And if, this map is so big. Yeah, if you are confident enough to go for a, such an early third base and also for a hatch first, then you will know the timings exactly when your opponent can hit you. And he identified the build of Trap with the Overlord. He's also checking it just to make sure that there's no cannon going on at the third. That's something we see popular um, in Brood War more than StarCraft II these days. But you see it from time to time, MC very known for that. And now that the Cybernetic score is done, is it going to be Stargate? I, I have a feeling in my bones that it is. It, you know what, if it is a Stargate, and I agree with you, this is a very good, uh, it's, it's a possibility. But Shine lost to Jungby on this map against a Stargate player. I feel if it's a Stargate, it shouldn't really do a lot. Because this was one of the games that Shine wanted to win. And that was one of the shots that he had to get farther in Code A and then add up in Code S. But Jungby really shot him down. So. Shine probably, after this loss, had a very good look at the strategy. And there's the Stargate. So I'm really excited to see how Shine adapted after he lost to Jungby on this map to a similar opening. Yeah. And what sort of opening are we going to see? I think it's going to be Phoenix's. But yeah. Trap is, what, is basically what he's saying here is he's probably going to take a third base mm -hmm. when he puts that Stargate down. We have seen players follow this up with two base attack, depending on how much damage the Phoenixes do. But in case you haven't seen the game that I was referring to, what Jungbi did was opening uh, not with Phoenixes, but we went into Void Race and then warped onto the high ground. It's a bit sneaky and it's more all inish. Trap with the positioning of the Stargate now is more likely to go into the Phoenix play that we'll point it out. But an opening like this, this is something that Shine probably trained with a lot. These are there. What kind of two-base attack can you go for here? You can go into gateway attacks, you can go into an immortal push, and yeah. you can over the Stargate. So, these are the options that Trap has, and Shine is aware of it. And actually, his Overlord did not see the Stargate, so Trap is going to show it, though. He's rallied his Phoenix exactly where the Overlord is hiding. He's even got his Immortal, or rather his uh, stock and sensor ready to kill the Overlord. Immortals can kill Overlords, man. We, the world can be in trouble. 
There it goes. If morals were that good, I think the, the governments of the world would actually try to make them <laughs> and perfect the perfect their use of combat. I'm interested in the follow-up for, uh, for uh, Jeff. This is only the first step. If oh, and there we go. Five gateways are being yep. built now. So he wants to hit heavy. There are a lot of things that you can do with the Stargate opening. A hero on Cloud Kingdom and a few other maps goes into a, an attack on three bases. He gets the third, doesn't really mind from the third, and then starts to push out with a lot of Immortals, up to five. Uses his Phoenixes to lift the Infestors, because at the time that he arrives at his opponent's base, there will be Infestors on the map. He tries to make sure that the Infestors doesn't, don't get the Fungals with the Phoenixes, with the lift. But this is a different style. This is Trap following this up immediately with a lot of gateways. And Shine? might misjudge the situation. Yeah. He's also supply blocked heavily. Look at this. Yeah, Three supply left and he just starts yeah. one overlord now. He's going Hydras to defend. He's getting a little bit desperate. I think he's freaking out a little bit right now because you know, he sees now with his overlord at the bottom left, there's no third base. There's no wall, not even a pylon. So there's no reason to believe this is not going to be an aggressive attack. That first Phoenix that killed the Overlord is actually still chilling out over there. He probably wants to bring that. He's actually waiting with his warpins too. This makes it even scarier. The Hydras are actually awesome for him. He has yeah. Roaches already and if he gets Hydras out now, that doesn't only help him against the, yeah, the Phoenixes. It helps him a lot against those gateway units. And you see in the Hydras then now, the thing is, you always want to shield your Hydralis, and that's what he does. But there's a lot coming out of trap now. There's the force field at the ramp. This is exactly what he wanted. But here come the Zerglings trying to take down the sentries. Well, the third base is exposed to the Zealots. And there's nothing but a queen and a sport call there to defend. But I gotta say, this attack is an actual. Shine has a lot. Down. Yeah. Shine has really a lot. And if he uh, reacts well, he could pull the drones and then defend the third after all. Trap is trying to make the impossible possible. He already goes into a robotic spay, has a follow up for his. But how much damage does this attack really do? It doesn't not look a like a lot. Yeah, not a lot at all. A really nice drum pull here. The defense of the natural is good despite the sentries, which still is starting to bug him a little bit here. He's actually working a few more to continue the attack. Not over yet. Overlord's just starting to go down. He's killed several oh. queens. And now suddenly he has the force field on yeah. the ramp and he has the warp prism on the high ground. And this is not going to stop. But there are, for a while. he has a couple of units in the main base. Those initial zealots have a problem. And Trap realizes that this is probably not going to work. Especially with the macro hatch in the main base. There are so many exactly. units that are being built. Even if you get another round of warp ins in, there will be hydrolisk and roaches you have to deal with. And if you lose these units, you will end up trading That's very cost inefficiently. The macro hatch is the concern because he, he could have decided to keep warping in. We've seen players actually make this mistake before. Hero at BWC, I believe against Sen. Uh, made this mistake on Tall Dream Altar where he thought, you know, if I just keep working, I can maybe kill him. But if you don't, then you lose because you spend all your resources there. Every warp and you use is not enough. He wants to get his resources going on these Colossi, something that Shine is already preparing for with his Spire right now. And what does this leave us in? Looking at this game, the attack that Trap executed did not do too much damage. They traded kind of cost efficiently. The Harvesters killed are 13. So a decent amount of drones being eliminated by Trap. But Shine is still very much ahead. With four hatches, he has such a good production that he has more Harvesters. He has Roaches and Hydralis and he's pushing out with them before the Colossi are getting too much of, becoming too much of a threat. And the Spire that Wolf mentioned. With the Spire, he will be able to get his Corruptors out there. So... This is a very, very peculiar situation for Trap. He's definitely not out of it yet, but he needs to be careful here because Shine showed us already that he likes to hit aggressive timings. If he gets the Corruptors out and attacks immediately, the third base will be difficult to hold. Yeah, you know, I, I'm actually a little bit shocked that he's trying to take this, this third. I mean, he's going to go for some Zealot Harass with the draw, Shine back, and it's actually going to work. He's going to get several drones here and... He's actually watched his entire army. You know, we are 13 minutes in the game. He has to try to take a third base. Being uh, gearing up for another big timing with the tech that is already there for the Zerg would be very all in ish. That is just putting all your money on one card. With a third base, he is in uh, this position where it's difficult to hold it if Shine hits the timing, but he can do it with good force fields. And with the good positioning of the Colossi, he can take this. He wants to get, of course, the Blink, which is what he does now. It gives him a bit more mobility because he doesn't know exactly where he's gonna, uh, where the attack is gonna he hit. He just has to turtle and hope for the best, you know, and try to max out and take a good fight. But I just ah, uh, that's oh, un this, that's unfortunate. This that's terrible. Very, very unfortunate. Yeah. He loses it, loses everything inside. Now he's down 75 supply, and he's got. I mean, he's got the swarm, the Zerg swarm, walking down on him with no investors. Yeah, but with enough corruptors to push these colossi back. 
The initial attack did, never did the damage that it needed to do, and now it's very difficult for him to hold this. There are so many corruptors that can deal with those three colossi. And here we go, he moves in immediately. He already queued up the rallies on the colossi. Here comes Corruptioner. These guys are not going to survive. All of them dying. The stalkers trying their best, but it's just not enough. The force fields are decent, but Shine can now just wait. Uh, this is very unlucky for a trap. Very unfortunate for him. He's yep. in so much trouble. He's in a lot of trouble. Now Shine is going to have to back up with all the roaches he's remaxing with, with no Colossi being left. He's, he's the reinforcements. Are he's trying just to on make immortals way. because he knows that that's going to be the follow up, but. One immortal at a time is not going to be enough. The Templar Archives that he's making right now is not going to be the answer either. Shine is getting upgrades. He's getting a delayed speed for the Zerglings. Earlier he didn't get it. He was relying on Roach Hydra. He needed the gas. Now he's getting it. But we have a fourth base for him coming up. The attack upgrades for Trap are great though. He's going into plus three now. And he's trying to get the Templar Archive out there. But Shine's army is so huge. He has 130 army supply against 70. And he's just gearing up and waiting to hit this third again. Here we go, the Roaches running in, Sock is trying to blink back, but the Lings, you mentioned it, they have the speed now. The Corruptors are not very useful in this case, but he does try to corrupt those important Immortals. If he can use Corruption well, then he can do a lot of damage, and he's trying to move in here. He's trying to do his best, he's not overcommitting. he's always bouncing back and forth a little bit. And now the Sentry's out of energy, now the Roaches and Idol is close the distance. Moving in, corruption being used on the Immortals. He doesn't have enough Roaches here. Yeah, he does not. And even the Hydras that he has are not enough. And Trap holds pretty decently here. Yeah. And there's a bunch of Lings following this up. But with good Force Shields, again, the Lings are not going to be too useful. The problem, of course, becomes that fourth base, which Shine can easily drone for. He's actually getting five more drones right now. He can start to use that fourth base and make a, a Hive. Shine does not stop with his macro, and this is very important. If the Zerg player just tries to go with his head through the wall, then he might lose the game. And, of course, Trap might still be able to take it, but Shine just macros it up. He goes for the Overlord speed right now. We have him also with the uh, upgrade for the Pathogen Glands, that he can get the first Infestors in here. But Trap, even though he's really pressured, is still aware enough to put a few Zealots out there to not only scout the fort, but force Shine to go back. Between the Minerals and the Assimilator here, just trying to, to make the best use of those Zealots, but Plus three finishes for, for Trap. He's still making Immortals. In fact, his Immortal count now up to four. He's trying to make those Corruptors as useless as possible because he already knows the Corruptor count the way it is. It's not going to be useful for him to try to make Colossi until Broodlords are out. I really like how he approaches this. Yeah. He didn't do as much damage in the early game as he wanted to, but he made the best out of the bad situation. And he's, he's now with a, he has an army that is strong enough to take down whatever Shine has here. And Shine realizes this. Shine goes now into Hive. He knows, yes, I have the superior army uh, in terms of numbers, and I can definitely make sure that you don't get a fourth right now, but this third, I can't really get to you. I tried twice, and your force fields are good. You have too many immortals now. You have plus three attack. If I try to run in with those units that I have, Lings and Roaches, you're going to crush my army, then you're going to counter attack, and I might not be able to stop you. So let's just sit tight, wait, macro it up, and then I win in the late game. I wonder if he's going to take the fourth base right now or if he's going to try to push out. Looks like he wants to push out because if he takes a fourth and starts a, a fleet peak, and I feel like Trap could actually, on a map of this size, you know, at first that works against the Protoss in some ways, but in this late game situation, I feel like he could actually make a fleet peak and take a fourth base and play the late game because the Bruler is going to take forever to get across the map. He could actually use his warp prisms to harass constantly and actually go into the late game. There's the Greer Spire. A big problem with the fourth base is that the fourth on this map is so open. It's you so can, open. You can attack from so many different angles, and Trap is just trying to hit a timing before the Brute Lord's out. He has scouts on the map, so he is aware of what's going on. And Shine doesn't have too many spine crawlers if you think about it. He is still relying uh, very much on those eight corruptors and the eight infestors. But this is such a huge, such a huge amount, a large amount of uh, of stalkers. Oh, and look at this! The four seals are good. The Ling's not too useful here, and without Brute Lords, he can't actually fight this. this Those corruptors are useless. This is a 200 supply army for Trap, and he has now suddenly units in the main base that take out the Queens. The Spine Crawlers help, but Shine is now suddenly the player who's on the defensive, and he's just trying to buy time for his Brute Lords. Yeah, he's, he's spread very thinly here. He you doesn't know, have the Spine Crawlers. The Greater Spire is actually exposed now, but he doesn't, he doesn't actually mic the Spine Crawlers. He has no chance not to enough, And he actually needs to get some good bungles, but He's four sealed it out. The corruptors are all going to die here. I'm surprised that he doesn't sec the fourth base. I feel this would have been the better choice Absolutely. here. Absolutely. There's no way in hell he's going to hold this. 
And he's losing his army now. And he loses his just, army and the fourth. If he sacks the fourth base, then he is at least able to buy some time for the Broodlords. Now he's reinforcing with 60 Zerglings. Against he doesn't many have, Archons? He doesn't have the bank anymore. I, I feel like like he panicked a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And now suddenly Trap is in such a great position. He's in a good position to take down the third base. Units from everywhere are streaming in for Shine, but he's dropping in supply. Trap is ahead in army. And Trap is going to take this wolf. Yeah, he's got too much of a great position on top of Shine's limited army. And the reinforcers are dying at this spawn. GG. Trap, I can't believe he did it, but he takes this game. Very well played. And he needed this win to be yeah. able to do anything in this crew. He really needed the win, and very, very difficult here for for him to pull this off. And uh, Shine, I don't know, I feel sec. You know, with the timing for the Great Aspire, sacking the fourth base buys you a few precious seconds. Then you can try to get those Brood Lords. What he did was using his entire bank he saved up. He was skipping on the spine crawlers earlier because he wanted to have this mineral bank. Skipping on the spine crawlers made sure that Trap could move into the fourth base, and then he used the bank on links yeah. against plus three Arkan Zealot. With a ton of Link Stalker support. I feel he hit the panic button a little bit too early and buying time with the Infestors and with a few fungals, sacking the fourth base, getting the Brood Lords out might have won him the game. I think he panicked game. when he saw the Zealots in the main. You know, he hesitated with his army so much, he didn't get his Infestors over the fourth to try to buy time. Then, after he realized that the Zealots were not uh. a big threat in his main, that's when he sent everything over the fourth and then just died with his army there and that was the end of the game. Trap though, with a great performance here, holding the third for a long time, great force fields, always shutting Shine out, getting all these immortals that helps him against the Roach and Link composition, especially against the Roaches, of course. And then he had the patience, he waited, and he saw his time come, and he took the timing that he had. Well played, keeps himself in the game, in the group. Shine now lost his second game, very unfortunate for him, of course. That makes up for a very interesting group situation. Yeah. But before we just analyze this a bit more, let's have a look at our next two players. We have Teja up 2-0 in this group. He wants to get a third win, and then he would be in a great position here. He would be on 3-0, as is Squirtle already. Dream, on the other hand, he has to uh, he has to win now. He's on 1-1 at this point. He wants to get a bit farther ahead in this game. Yeah. This is really important for Dream more than it is for Teja. Teja, if he wins this, is just... He's almost basically set, but Dream on the other hand really wants a win here. The map is in Tomb Valley, so we've already seen a TBT here, we're going to see it again. Let's see how these styles vary. We could see Meg versus Meg, that's not what we saw before. Teja with his excellent macro, man. We'll see if he does it again. TBT on Entombed. I am Wolf with me as Calder. This is the up and down matches. 2013.